In this video, we are going to check two state handling methods in React. One is using context, you know, basic context in React. Then in the other one, we are going to use Mobix. That's a external li library we can use to manage state. And we are going to compare those two because when I first start um, React, I had a you know really hard time figuring out how to handle data in React because like first I thought maybe I could you know pass everything as props and that is enough to manage data in my or state in my application. Well, I could do that, but it's going to re it's going to be really hard to manage things. You know, basically, I would say it would be messy. Then I thought maybe I could use contexts to manage the state well i could do that but um there are drawbacks in using contexts so i will show you them in this video and i'm going to show you a basic mobex example how to use mobex and we're going to compare as i said we're going to compare mobex and context example and let's see uh, why maybe we will have to use um, a state management library instead of contexts so i just created this project using create react app this is the default typescript um, template or boilerplate and let's get started first we will need to by the way i already have created context example i'm going to create the same thing same example using mobex in this video so let's First, install Mobix. John add Mobix, and we're going to need Mobix um, React or React Lite. We can use both, but React Lite Light is um, lighter than Mobix React because it's um, removed everything related to class components. So this Mobix React Lite only has um, things related to functional components let's just add them okay now we installed our external libra libraries now we can start working in our application i'll go to app.tsx and i will i will remove every, everything inside this div tag i don't need them then i will remove this logo import so in mobex there is uh, there is a concept called store and that store contains all the data of this application static and dynamic data and the same store contains functions to mani manipulate that data by the way you can create multiple stores and pass it to any component you want but for this example I'm going to pass it to the entire application so this is working like a global store First, I'm going to create a method called create store. This is a simple JavaScript method. I'm going to return an object inside this um, create store method. For now, I'll keep it empty. So um, this create store is a just a method that returns my initial that returns initial values for my um, store. So in order to create a store, we need to be inside a component. So I'll go into app component. I'll create a variable called the store and I'm going to create the local store. I'm going to use use local store method and I'm going to pass this create store store to this uh, use local store i'm going to have to import this um use local store thing import use local store from mobex react light okay now we got the store created using this create store uh, template or initial values now we need to provide this to our application. This is just a local variable for now. We should figure out a way to provide this to 
of a, a entire application so when when i say the word provide what comes to your mind i think it is context so i'll define context called context well maybe i should yeah i'll change the name because it's confusing i'll call this store context and i'm going to create a new context using create context method that comes from react and i'm going to set the type since it's type typescript but for now i don't have a um type to provide so i will create one i'm going to define an interface let's call this i store right now it's empty so i'll pass i store and we need to provide a uh, we need to provide initial value i'm going to pass null but when i pass null it says uh, param it's not matching with i store type so i guess i will have to use a union uh, uh, union to um, define its type so it's either it's going to be i store type or null cool now i got my store context and using that store context i can provide this uh store mobex store we created so let's just do that i'll create return statement and i'm going to use store context dot provider like this and i'm going to cut this component and paste it inside our provider okay look good looks good now we need to provide a value to this provider i'll define provide sorry value attribute as a value attribute i'm going to pass a store so this store context will make sure um this value this store will uh, will be available each and every component within our application so just like that we created our store using um, use local store and we have provided that store using a context you know simple react context now let's see how we can um, use values in this store okay well first of all i will have to create a property otherwise otherwise there is nothing to use inside this um okay i will create a property called name i'm going to uh, name this mobex example okay now we got one property we can request that in a child component within this app so let's create a directory called components whoa components inside there i'm going to create a component called i'll call this con uh, content tsx and i'll create two more components called header and form okay now let's implement these components um let's define context i don't want to actually i want to uh, export this as the default export so i will type export default content like that the same way i will define header and form let's call this header and i'll need to change it here as well copy that actually i already got copy call this form and change it in the default export okay now we got three components now i'm going to use this content component inside our app first i'll have to import that import content from 
components directory inside there i will find this com content component and let's use it content okay now i'm going to define this header sorry i'm going to use this header and form components inside content just because we can have multiple levels um so let's import header and form import can i use the automatic import thing oh yeah i can the same way let's import form as well okay now we got uh, two components inside content and content is used inside my main app component so now when i request uh, the store inside header or form it should be available let's try that so in order to use a context i'm going to use use context uh, react react hook let's define any variable to store the store const store use store sorry use context from react whoa store and i'm i'm going to have to import well let me put this file in right side so we got app component and i'm going to I'm going to have to import this store context so now we are not exporting this right now so I'll do export and okay it's not automatically importing so I guess um, let's go back to app component and then import it okay we have to import this use context from react okay looks good now we got a store so i will summarize things we did up to now we have created the template or method to create our initial store then we created the store then we provided the store using a context and right now in my header component i am requesting that context using use context um, react hook um, then i got the store variable now what i'm going to do is i'm going to create a header tag and inside that header tag i'm going to use store dot um, well i'm not getting the type okay uh, so so this is what's happening we don't have name property in our store type and there is one more thing we need to do first let's add name property as a string now i store type has property called name now now again i'm going to use this name auto completion now check when i hit enter it's going to add a question mark to this store this is a new feature in uh, typescript 3.7 i guess so this question mark basically will check if this store is null or undefined because we have defined the type of this context as a un as an union so we are so either it's going to be i store type or null so when i'm using this store it does not know typescript does not know if this store variable is null or i store type so it's basically checking if this is null so if this is null, it's going to be returned. It's going to return undefined. If it is not null, it's going to access this property name and it's going to return the value. So this is going to be a huge, um, huge headache to debug. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to create if condition and check if store is null or not. If it is null, I'm going to throw an error like this now i don't need to i don't need this question mark 
okay looks good now I will go to form and I will just type hello world in here let's see if this work right now and as I said we created the store we provided the store and we are using it here we are you know requesting the store and I'm using this store.name property from um, this store so now when I run this application it should display mobex example and hello world from this form component let's run this one okay cool now we can access properties from from our store that's good so far we only have a one property i'm going to add a few more i'm going to add count let's um let's initialize zero as the initial value then i'm going to define a method called inc to increment this count value inside here i'm going to access this dot count and i'm going to plus and equal to one so that uh, when this method is called it's going to increase uh, increment the value of count to count by one okay now i need to update the type count it's going to be a number ber and there what the hell then and there's going to be um this increment method inc that takes nothing and returns nothing okay now let's go to form component and let's request this uh, store i don't know why it's doing that use context okay now we requested the store now i'm going to use it um like this i'm going to define a header so inside inside that header i'm going to display store.count and again i will have to check if store is null or not if it is null i'm going to throw new error like that i don't need this question mark anymore okay now let's create a button now when i click this button it's going to um, call a method called increment C R E M E N T. I think the spellings is correct. Let's um, create that method. Const okay. Now inside this method, I'm going to call store dot inc method. So that inc method will increment the value of this uh, count variable i guess everything looks good now when i go back to our example when i click on this button it should increment this value right so i'm clicking on this button but the view is not updated for some reason let's go back now just because we are using the uh, using a property from the store it's not going to update my view so if i want to if i want this view to be updated whenever this count is updated i will have to be specific about that so uh, i need to i'm going to wrap this component with use observer so let's return I'm going to use use observer um what do you call them high order function high order component sorry i'm going to use use observer and it's taking a function as the parameter 
and as a parameter I'm going to pass this component to to that now let's get rid of this return statement okay now looks good now let's go back now when I click on this button it's going to update the view so so there you go this is our example I'm going to add few more things to this project I'm going to add a console log to each and every component so that I can see when uh, when these components are updated and how many times they are updated okay I have added some um, console logs now I'll go to the console and let's refresh this page as you can see it's initially rendering each and every component I uh, don't mind this uh, you know duplicate console log in development build it's going to render some components twice for debugging uh, purposes but it's not going to do, do that in a production build so don't mind that so we got app component generated sorry rendered content header form okay looks good I'm going to clear this console then I'm going to click on this you see it's only re-rendering form component because the value is changed and view should be changed because of that again only form component now I have another example where I did the same thing did the same example but using contexts I'll uh, explain this I got the type iStore and I have created the context to provide my store sorry um, yeah we can call it store I guess um, so inside this app component instead of using um, mobix store I'm using a state this state variable and I have this INC method defined in the component inside there I'm uh, setting uh, I'm using this set count to update this state in the view I'm using context provider to provide this uh, the, all this stuff and I have included count this state variable count and a static variable called static property called name just like we did in uh, um, in our Mobix example and the function INC and in my I'll go to form component in my form component just like we did in our Mobix example I'm uh, you know requesting my store I'm checking it if it is null or not then the same way I'm accessing store.count and I'm going to call increment method inside that I'm calling store.inc just like we did in um, Mobex example now I will run this example I'm going to have to use a separate port because I'm already running Mobex example okay let's go back now we got two examples one one is Mobex example the other one is context example now when I click on this it's going to work it's going to work perfectly but I will open up console I will refresh this page so initially it's going to render each and every component as usual I'll clear this console now I'm going to click on this button now when I click on this you see it's rendering app component why the hell is that because our state is in app component so when the state is changed it's going to re-render that component right so it's going to re-render app component unfortunately even though we are not using state in our you know view I'm, I'm actually passing it as uh, to my provider but but I'm not using it in my view and let's go back and it's uh, re-rendering content for some reason I'll go to content uh, so I don't have any props to change and I'm clearly not using the context so why the hell this thing is updated so in form component we are changing app components state so when the when the state changes 
that component it's is going to update itself or re-render itself because of that re-rendering app component is the main component in our application because of that it's going to automatically re-render all the uh, children components well that includes our content component even though we don't need to update our view it's going to be re-rendered um, by the way we could use memo higher order component to avoid re-rendering but um, it, it will work in this case but it's not going to work uh, in most cases because like um, most most components are using props and they're going to be changed over time so you know it's not a cheap process to use memo on uh, changing components so so i guess uh, that's one reason not to use um, not to use context uh, in in a scenario like this and we got header so in header we are only using that static value but the thing with context is whenever the context is updated every single component that uses that uh, context is going to be re-rendered um, i will say it again i'll go to app component so this name property is static that is that will never change but when i click on this button click on that button it's going to update this um it's going to call this inc method it's going to update this count and so that count variable is provide provided by this context and i'm using that context inside this header because i'm using that context whenever any property in that context is updated it's going to re-render each and every single component that uses that context when form update that count variable even though i'm not using inside header it's going to re-render header component so those are the drawbacks of um, using contexts in our applications to handle state so i think you get the idea as you can see our uh, contexts are not great to handle things that is updated so frequently for that use a separate um state management library i guess you can use context to you know pass static data throughout our application things uh, that changes only time to time like the theme of our application for things like that we can use context i guess hopefully you will get something out of this video and um you know it will i think it will help you to get better decisions when it comes to data handling in react so that's it for this video thanks for watching have a nice day